Hola, hola. I hope everyone's having a good week so far. Happy Friday. Um, I thought I would come on here and let you guys know before we get officially started, the only way I can see your comments is if you're on ShellyTV.com. I know this is streaming to Twitter, but it's just too much work. So you know what, you guys, you're going to have to go to ShellyTV.com, sign up. It's totally free. That's It is an OnlyFans page, but it's, there's no like 18 plus kind of content on there. It's just for my live streams and my little update videos. So go over to ShellyTV.com. And now let's get started. <laughs> Come and dance on our floor. Come and dance on our floor. Take a step that is new. Take a step that is new. We have a lovable space that needs your face. Please come for me too. You'll see that life is a ball again. Laughter is coming for you. Down at our rendezvous. Here's the thing, I messed up because I have the intro on my system here, <laughs> but I forgot I have to do a screen share for you guys to see me. Let's go on over to OnlyFans. Waiting for people to get in there. I have like the most effed up situation going on right now. I'm pale. I hate when I'm pale. I love being the tampire. Now, do you like my shirt? This shirt is a vampire girl shirt, and it's also available in Vampire Guy. And for Vampire Girl, we also have it in pink. If you go to goodvibrationsboutique.com, right now you can save 20% off your order if you use the code FANGS. <laughs> And we got a lot of other cool stuff there. I got some accessories, some vinyl, and some more shirts, other designs. So go and check it out. Let's see here. I'm trying to make sure everything's going A-OK. -okay. Ew, and then my eyelash. I'm always having eyelash problems lately. Okay, let's see here. Let me make sure it's working on Twitter. Okay, hey, great. It looks like it is working on Twitter. <clears throat> so, if you don't know, now you know. I have been having some health issues. And surprise, surprise, if you've been following me for a while now, you know that that's just something that always happens to me. And thank goodness I do feel better today. Um, well, hold on. Is my mic on? Just making sure. <laughs> Okay, good. So, um, so here's what's been going on. So I don't know if you know, but last month I got COVID. The whole household got COVID. And it was a lot. But I'm going to go ahead and say this. I'm able to look at my COVID situation as a positive in the sense of it really, how, how can I explain it? For me, I know everybody is different, but for me, when I had COVID, it kind of made me reevaluate my life, if that makes any sense to anyone out there. It... I don't know, not to sound like dramatic or whatever, but it almost was like an out of body experience kind of thing. And like looking at myself in this like third person and knowing that there is like some changes I need to make. I needed to detox and just everything. 
And even though it sucked, because there was times where, especially the first few days, it was effing rough. I'm so fortunate to live in a house where I was able to just quarantine in my room. Uh, I had my bathroom right there. Like, I don't have to leave my room. I was comfortable as I could be with having COVID. And it was just so crazy because it kind of turned into a spiritual realization for me. And it was really awesome because I couldn't care less about smoking and definitely not drinking. So it made me a lightweight with my drinking and smoking, which is really cool because if you don't know, I became a medicator when I was about 25 and I started drinking about that same time. And so when I got better and I no longer was sick, I was such a lightweight. And even when I was starting to get better and I was incorporating medicating while I was still sick, um, because I didn't drink when I was just like, ugh, I'm not gonna make my immune system worse. But the medicating did help, but I would notice like one or two hits and I was like, okay, good, I feel better, whatever, I was able to maintain. So fast forward to now, so that was last month. And so this month, I don't know, like, I know people talk about long COVID or whatever. I feel like I definitely had, I mean, I'm, I've tested and I'm negative. So it's nothing like that, but I just feel like some of those effects kind of still wore on me or whatever. And it's crazy because first of all, couldn't celebrate 420 properly because of the COVID. And then by the time Cinco de Mayo rolled around, I was still like, like I went to this really cute place. I don't know if you saw my Instagram, Shelly from Kelly Four. Um, I did a little cute video and I'm with Minnie and I have this margarita. Like that's the only margarita I had on Cinco de Mayo. Earlier before I went to that restaurant, I did have, I think some a little bit of champagne with Danielle because we're watching Passions, which we'll get to in a second. And it was so crazy because I remember being at the restaurant and I was just like, oh, I still just don't feel right. Like, that's why I'm not even mad that I'm only, I enjoyed that margarita. Get, don't get me wrong. So it was all good. But I really appreciate how COVID, just like I said, made me an F and lightweight, like to no end. So I like that uh, because there was definitely times in my life where I started uh, specifically boozing too much. My tolerance just went way up and I didn't like that. I missed being able to just drink very little and getting my buzz on, you know, and not to mention, you know, I didn't want to like, like sometimes I would overdo it. Then I would throw up and it was just like a whole thing. And I really feel with COVID, I realized I needed to take control back, you know, and I did. Then shortly after Cinco de Mayo, I was just like, oh, I just don't feel good, you know? So the good news is, is that I do have insurance and I was just talking to my secret society yesterday. I had a live stream with them. And some of my members have been with me for many, many years. And I was discussing with them, if you guys remember, like about 2015-ish, I really had a bad summer. And that, the reason why I said I had a bad summer is because I was consistently nauseous, um, just not feeling right, like, ugh. And I kind of felt like that's what I was feeling again after recovering from COVID. So then that's why I was like, is it the long COVID? Like, what's the deal? But then I'm like, you know what? I don't think so. I think it's more like my dumb Shelly issues. Ugh. Since I was a kid, I've had GI tract issues and a very nervous stomach. So what I would do back in the day, when, especially when I had that really bad summer, because that was like the worst it had gotten. I started feeling better. And then I really didn't feel that bad again until like now. So that's like quite a few years. And so when I felt better, I was like, oh, I feel better. I don't have insurance. I'm not going to the doctors. I feel better. So 
now that I have insurance and the good insurance, I'm like, you know what? Even though like today is probably the best day I felt in weeks, I still need to go to the doctor to see what the hell my problem is. Like, what is it? What's going on? I'm still searching for a doctor. I'm hoping, knock on wood, next week um, I'll be able to go and see somebody. But I'm just trying to find the right fit right now. And I'm really curious to see, like, what my issues are, you know. And I have been cleaning up my diet, you know. And I still don't really want to drink because I just don't feel good so then there was that you know so that's what's up <laughs> that's what's up and that's what I've been going through and it's been a lot but I'm just trucking on you know what I mean like my music I made sure to get royalty free music I have um, like I have an account on this website where it's like all royalty free music so don't get mad at me over here okay let's see here just want to make sure i'm still streaming so yeah so it's been quite the journey over here at costa martinez but Getting on through. Um, after I'm done hanging out with you guys, I'm going to go to the post office and mail out some orders from Good Vibrations Boutique. And I'm really excited because, actually, I'll show you right now. As you guys know, I love Svengoolie. He's my homie. Shout out Svengoolie. And it was so cool that... A couple years ago, when I was at the record store that I go to, I found this. And I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. And what's really cute, okay. look how cute. It is so cute. And then we got this side. It's just so cute. And um, so I was really excited about it. And then when I started Good Vibrations Boutique, I was like, ooh, let's see if we can get some of those in stock. And I did. I sold out twice now. I had them. I had them on. I had the Spinguli vinyl before on sale. And then I sold out. Then I found a couple more. And now I'm sold out again. So if you're watching this and you ordered a Spinguli vinyl for me I meant to send it out yesterday but things got like I just couldn't get to the I was gonna say airport I couldn't get to the um oh, I can't wait, I'll just do this later <laughs> I couldn't get to the PO or, I can't think how now brown cow unique New York okay let's start over <laughs> I couldn't get to the mail um in time to the post office there we go the post office <sighs> I'm gonna get to the post office on time, so it'll go out today. Yesterday, when I was walking Minnie, I did record a new Vampire Diaries, and um, I'm gonna bring it out soon. And yesterday, when I did the live stream, oh, I'm sorry, I did the live stream on Wednesday. All of, all these days are just meshing together. I did the live stream on Wednesday, and then yesterday I did the Vampire Diaries. I talked about some stuff that I thought some of you out there would like to hear because I know a lot of you are fans through wrestling. So I'll give you the short version because you had to listen to my Vampire Diaries to find out the whole deal. But long story short, um, when I was doing my stream with my Secret Society, one of my Secret Society members had told me they had just got done watching AEW. And I was like, well, who's your favorite wrestler? And one of the people they said was CM Punk. And then I went on this whole thing about why I don't like CM Punk anymore. And it's so crazy because I used to put Punk on such a pedestal that, and that's my fault. Like, first of all, Punk never has owned me anything. Like, who am I? Nobody to him. But 
unfortunately, I did one of those things where I just put him on a pedestal. And here's the reason why I did. We both started OVW around the same time. We both ended up being on TV around the same time with the fake ECW. So what I saw with Punk was hope. Hope that and hope and inspiration. Because I saw that Punk didn't play the politics. He didn't kiss ass. He wasn't fake and bony like most of the people that were around us. So I was like, dude, long live punk. Like, oh my God. And like, hello, he's awesome in the mic. He's an awesome wrestler. There's that. Well, but what made me like, but there's a lot of people that are good on the mic and that are awesome wrestlers. So what put him in a different category for me was just seeing, because I was there behind the scenes, seeing when they were effing with him, people were trying to keep him down. And through recent years, I'm just like, I feel he sold out. And this is just my opinion. A, if you're a fan of punk and you love him, you be a fan. I am not trying to take that away from you. Not 1%. But people tune in to hear my thoughts because I have been in a position where I've been around these people. I guess you would say I live amongst these people at a time. And it's just so disappointing that... I feel like punk's just sold out and you know, I don't know people's situations. I haven't talked to punk in so many years. So who knows? Because like it used to irk me when people be like, Oh, I retire from wrestling and then they go back or whatever. But then I realized like, you don't know the deal. Like maybe financial, like it's a financial thing or People, going back to financial, people in their family or whatever are depending on them. So how can I be upset with that? You just can't. I am so blessed that once I hung up my fangs in wrestling, <laughs> usually I see the wrestling boots, but I don't ever really wore wrestling boots. Once I hung up my fangs and cape in the world of wrestling, I really meant it. And there was a time before I decided I was going to retire when I did try to get my job back with WWE. And the reason why wasn't because I was like, yeah, WWE. It was like, dude, I'm a broke ass bitch. Like, what am I going to do? Wrestling on the Indies is just not cutting it anymore. The only way I'm going to make real money to take care of me and my family, meaning me, Danielle and the Mertzes at the time is I need to make more money. And I did try to get my job back. So that's why I do understand that people will say they're leaving wrestling or whatever, and then they come back. I'm so glad that WWE just jerked me around and effed with me. I had no intention of bringing me back. They just were messing with me when they talked to me. But at the time, it sucked because I was like, oh, my God, like, I, I'm just a broke-ass bitch. And I need to change that, you know? And what else am I going to do? And there was even a time where... I was like, I don't care. Like, I'll just get a real job. And I tried and like, no one got back to me because I had my, my resume was, I was a professor, professional wrestler for like so many years. And I had a real job since 2003. Yeah. 2003 was the last time I had, I was a waitress and bartender at Spearmint Rhino in, Cal in SoCal. That was the last like real job like that I had. And then wrestling took over. So I can't blame people for that. So it's not, I don't know. So like my feelings on punk and I go into detail on my vampire diaries. And so you got to check it out. I haven't uploaded it yet, but it'll be on ShellySecretSociety.com soon. I might put it on the Martinez Girls uh, radio Patreon. I'm not sure. We shall see. But uh, yeah, and speaking of, I've been so behind in my podcast. It's just with everything. Earlier, I was starting to edit the next talking shit with ACR. I have a wake and bake with special guest April Hunter coming. And then I have a Martinez Girls radio that I need to also uh, edit. So that's coming soon. Just go, just, just pay attention. <laughs> just keep following me. You know, I'll put it out there when I get it there. But I would be interested in hearing what 
ACR has to say about this. So I think maybe this will be a nice topic for our next talking shit. Because it's I always love talking to her about wrestling because we have so many similarities on how we feel about things, but then we also have some differences too in how we look at things. So I think that would be a great episode. I don't know. That's just me. Man, I am so blown out. And here's the thing. I have my light over there. And I even pushed it way back so it wasn't blowing me out all the way. But it just is. I, <laughs> damn it. If I was a little tan, more tan, my tan's going away. I need to tan it up again. Because you know me. I love being the tampire. I'm seeing some hearts over here on OnlyFans, but I don't see who's in the room. If you're on Shelly TV, say hi, because I see you. <laughs> and let's see, what else is there going on? Um, next week, I'm going to be doing this month's uh, live stream with my secret society for the Coffin Kitten Higher Tier. That's when I do my lingerie live stream. Last month when I did it, I did a lingerie haul, and I think I'm going to do the same thing, but this time it's going to be an Amazon haul of all of the stuff I've gotten on Amazon since then, um, including this awesome taco bikini. How cute is that? One of my lovely members. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cute, isn't it? You guys know I love Taco Tuesday. So we got some fun stuff like that going on. Um, I'm really going to be focusing on trying to uh, just keep up with Good Vibrations. So like I said, goodvibrationsboutique.com. Use the code FANGS. Poke around. See what's on there. We're, I'm going to be adding some new stuff still. And um, I'm really looking forward to it. And then next week, I should be having some... Um, news for some stuff hopefully that I got in the works but not gonna talk about it until everything's set in stone because I've learned the hard way <laughs> and yeah that's all I really got for you guys today um, before I started editing a little bit and then went live I walked mini and like I said I'm still not 100%, so it did take a lot out of me. I can go for a nap right now to tell you the truth. <laughs> I'm so tired. That's like the worst part. It's like I'm just consistently tired. But then I keep saying it could be worse because when I had COVID, that headache that I had, I don't know if any of you out there had COVID, but the headache I had, it was like I couldn't, there was a time where like I wouldn't even talk because it was just too much energy. I would be like, I would just text and that's it. I couldn't. And then if you've been paying attention to my Twitter, you know that when I got the COVID up until now, I have been watching, pa watching Passions. What's Passions? Passions is an old school, uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s soap opera. The only soap opera I've ever been into. It's crazy. Like Passions is all about like... It's like no other soap opera you ever seen. And I was telling Danielle, because now I got her into it. Um, back in the day, I went to Universal Studios. And they had, because they filmed at Universal Studios. And they had this whole meet and greet with the cast. And it was like so cool. I got to meet a lot of the cast people. And it was just so awesome. I wish I could find the autographs that I got. Because what they had is these like little, I mean, let's see, like about this big uh, photos and they would give them to people in the, uh, that were waiting to meet everybody. And it was like different photos of the different cast members and then you can go and meet them or whatever. So uh, it was really awesome. And I just remember meeting them and I just was so inspired. And I was like, dude, that's the name of the game. Land yourself a role on soap. Like, that's a steady gig. It's for as long as the soap, as long as the soap is still on, that's a steady ass gig. And there was a while where I was like, that's what I want to do. Like, you know, one of the things I should do is like, I want to be a wrestler and then I want to be in a soap opera. And then later I was like bent about being like 
on the novella, the Mexican ones. And I was like, I had to learn Spanish though. And then what made me feel like I could do it was Eric Estrada from Chips. I don't know if he's still on a, soap, a novella, but that's how he learned Spanish to be on the novella from what I understand. So that's when I was like, oh, okay. But if you, let's see, let's pull up some passions. Let's see if I can pull it up. Give you guys a little taste. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's see. Share screen. Slides. How can I can oh share screen? Chrome tab, there we go. Share. Okay. Isn't your move wonderful? I couldn't understand it. Poison should have worked by now. Princess, Timmy has a confession to make. Hmm? Timmy comes down to watch Charity's Romeo die. So he switched plate and paid for it. Hmm? We want? It's still on the plate. You should throw it away. What? Not that there's anything wrong with Elsie. Okay, Timmy coming to life. Here we go. All done. Well, aren't you a handsome devil? <laughs> Grace is going to regret it if she goes up against old Tabitha. Isn't that right, Timmy? I said, isn't that right, Timmy? Timmy! That's right, Tabitha. We're going to win. We're going to win. Poor Grace. Poor Grace. <laughs> so that's what Timmy is. Let's see if we can find another good Timmy. That's not too long. <laughs> um, let's see, what's a good one? Here, this one's seven minutes long, but I won't make it. Oh, no! And 
then let's get Timmy when he's dancing. But I just want you guys to get the vibe of Timmy, man. He's the best. Let's see. Oh, I should have had these um, already. Let's see, Timmy. Martinis. Dang it. I should have uh, had it queued up because Timmy's effing awesome. Why is them Timmy dancing doesn't come up? He likes to dance at Timmy. He died during the show when it was in real life when um, they were filming. Here's a, let's see what this is. You got that right. You won't forget this day. Timmy's confused. Tell me something I didn't know. You came here to make people's lives miserable with your fortunes. That girl left happy. You said her dream would come true. Believe me, Timmy. Teresa won't have quite the life she oh, imagines. Teresa. But she told her she'd be living in her mansion as Mrs. Crane. True enough, but it won't come to her easily. There are lots of surprises in store for her, and she's going to have to make lots of critical choices. And whatever she chooses, she's going to hurt people she loves. I almost feel sorry for her. You, Tabitha? I said almost. I'm going to enjoy watching what that girl does with her life. Believe me, Timmy, she's going to be like a tornado sweeping through this town. Destroy another life or two. Let's see who's around. That's odd. What is it, Tabitha? My ball is getting all dark inside. Never done that before. Something's not right. Maybe it's time. Maybe it wants to go home too. Oh, wait, Joseph. How did you do that? I didn't, you fool. Someone else did. Timmy's scared. So am I, Timmy. So am I. Timmy's all about the Martimmies, by the way. All about the Martimmies, which is his little drink that he likes to make. And the show is just filled with like magic, um, of course, drama, scandal. It's really great. And when I first was watching it again, because I had only seen it when it was in real life, like a real time rather, when it was new. And I just kept thinking about it when I had COVID and I remember tweeting out, I was like, I'm going to find out where I can watch passions. And I just kept thinking about it. I was like, damn, I'm just going to do it now. And I stayed up the entire night until like six in the morning, just binge watching. And ever since then, and like now it's gotten really good. Cause I'm almost done with season one and Danielle and I are just so hooked. And it's like on her days off, we binge watch it. Like, I'm like, do you want to watch passions? When she gets home from work, you want to watch passions. <laughs> So there you go. And then when I was tweeting about it, when I had COVID, I was so surprised on how many guys enjoy passions. Like, oh, my grandma used to watch that or 
I remember that show and then people, oh, Martimmies and all this. So it was really cool. So don't worry or keep rolling your eyes. <laughs> there's more passions to come because there's like, gosh, I don't even know how many seasons. It was on for oh, quite a few years. And there's a point where like I fell off and it wasn't like I fell off because I lost interest. I think like I just, I think what it was is probably wrestling just took over because in 99 is when I, when it first came out and I started wrestling in 2000. So I'm pretty sure that wrestling took the place of passions. <laughs> Anyways, well, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you for hanging out with me. Uh, I'll try to be doing this more often. Um, right now I'm just really trying to commit to doing Regal Beagle at least once a month. And, and, um, cause you know, I got my streams with my secret society, blah, 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 lots of stuff going on. And I'm so effing behind because I'm Shally. I'm always behind. And I'll leave you guys with this. I don't know if some of you out there can relate to being always behind on stuff or procrastinating or whatever. But for me growing up, I never really had guidance. No one was ever there to be like, is your homework done? How are you doing today? I was just like told, don't make noise, leave me alone. So I now realize and I'm having more patience with myself on how disorganized I can be, how undisciplined at times I can be because I had to learn all that stuff on my own. And I made a decision when I was younger that I wanted discipline. I wanted organization. These are things that I wanted and no one's ever effing taught me. So here I am, 62 years old, still figuring out life. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for joining me. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Shelly from Kelly 4. Make sure to go to goodvibrationsboutique.com, dot com, get yourself a shirt, use the code FANGS, get yourself a little discount. And until next time, I'm Shelly from Kelly, and I'll be smelling you later. Adios.